Frank Nabilo, the uh, Golf Channel analyst, and uh, he joins us now from Scotland. How would you describe the conditions today, Frank? Uh, Dan, they're a little bit uh, like what you were describing in your sort of um, dream golf over here. Uh, we, we're going to get everything today. Uh, it probably it won't blow like it did in the second round when that was delayed. Um, they expect it might top out at 25 miles an hour at times. But really, it's sort of a, a perfect win to have on this golf course. It's coming a little bit out of the southeast. That means that front nine is going to play similar to what it has been the first three rounds, but it also means, more importantly, those closing holes brings the out-of-bounds into play on just about everyone coming back to the clubhouse. There's enough rain. Um, it's going to stop. It's going to start up again. It's going to be all of that. It's going to irritate the living daylights out of the players. Better story, Spieth wins or an amateur wins? Paul Dunn. Um, I was talking with Brandel Chambly over, over breakfast this morning. We were pondering that, and, and I think I think if, if Paul Dunn were to win, we'd probably question the game right now. That's really the only downer. He's currently ranked the 80th ranked amateur in the world, and I know he played well in the NCAA's, but it would seem so weird how a player there that's 22, building his career, um, starting obviously at the University of Alabama, hasn't even turned pro, wins what some say is the greatest major of them all. Um, so that would seem really weird. On the flip side, obviously, you have a 21-year-old, someone even younger than him, who would still be in college, obviously, um, is about to do something that no one's done. A lot of people talk about Hogan in 53, but remember, the PJ Championship was actually played just slightly before the Open Championship. So technically, he didn't actually win the first three majors of the year. But also, too, just to add on top of that, Jordan at 21 would be the youngest ever winner, American winner of the Open Championship. So I, I guess I'd have to go with the latter. I saw where Phil Mickelson put it on somebody's balcony on the road hole. <laughs> yeah, he did. He was going along, and I, I think he, he figured he needed, like, sort of birdie eagle to finish. And um, we've seen that a couple of times. Uh, that's the hole that's going to get you. That breeze is coming off the left. You know if you hit it down the left, you've, you've almost got no shot of that flag. So you almost cheated over that what was a pseudo railway building of years gone by when the rain, the, tra the train actually used to come through. And you try and somehow sneak it around there. And if you do, you get a shot on there. I mean, it's a great par four, but they, you, as soon as you hit that tee shot and you lose it to the right, you know where it's going. Didn't Dustin Johnson put it on the roof over the weekend? Um, no, he didn't put it on the roof, but uh, he did finish um, bogey, bogey, bogey yesterday, which just killed his round. You know, you can excuse perhaps the bogey at 17, but 16 and 18, um, I, I guess that really was the hangover of Chambers Bay. Um, like I said, one bogey, he'd still be in the heart, and already today, he's, he's already three over for his round, so he is uh, done and dusted. A tougher course, uh, Chambers Bay or St. Andrews? Um, tougher, you would say Chambers Bay. Better, you would. There was no question. Um, this is fairer. You can play it in all sorts of conditions. The only reason they stopped it the other day, they would have stopped it anywhere. It, it, then it was gusting 45 miles an hour. They had RNA officials out there at 5:30 in the morning. They were rolling balls around. The, the problem green was really 11th, which is one green actually they haven't cut today. And um, they rolled them around, and they, and they said, well, you can't really have a competitive advantage. In other words, you can't just wait till it, till it goes. And they figured that the breeze was roughly what it was the evening before. So that's why they made that decision to go. Um, but this golf course, really, the, the only reason why I say that, this golf course can be played and wins up to 30 miles an hour. It's fair. It's nearly gettable. Um, it has all those intriguing characteristics. But, but you, when, you, when a shot leaves the club face here, you have a pretty good idea where it's going. You didn't have that at Chambers Bay. When's the last time you played St. Andrews? Um, the last time I played an Open Championship here, uh, they used to have an event called the Dunhill Cup, which yeah. is a team event. I first played here in, uh, when I was 23. And actually, one year we lost to, playing for New Zealand, we lost to America in the final with three players from each country. So I got to play it like 14 straight years and add a couple of Open Championships in here. And it, it is wonderful. It, uh, I played it in every condition, cold, freezing, sunshine, you name it. And, and that's the beauty of it. Um, you never truly feel comfortable. But you always feel challenged, doesn't matter what club you have in the bag. And, and, and you know where it fits. You, you know you're not only being challenged by the golf course, but everybody else that's played there. He's Frank Nabilo, the Golf Channel. You can see their coverage. They have uh, two hours of comprehensive news coverage wrapping up the uh, Open Championship live from St. Andrews from 1.30 till 3.30 Eastern today. Rich Lerner, Frank, and Brandel Chambly. Uh, if I gave you speed or the field? I'm going to take the field. Um, you have, at the start of the day, there was 14 players within three, and seven of those were major championships. 
I, I think it'd be preposterous. You know, I, I, Jordan's a favourite. There's no two ways about it because I think he's the most confident player in the field. The only thing really that detracts from him is perhaps the weather today. He played best in the conditions of the first and third rounds where the wind was at its least. But he's won a Masters. He's won a US Open. That's better than anybody this year. So he, when he stands on that first tee, I know his tee shot went close to the burn, but he's the most confident player and most prepared player um, because he can play from behind and he can play from in front. Not everybody else can say that, but amongst those 14 that started the day within three, there's seven major, seven major championship winners. So there's six guys that know how to get the job done. Best beer in Scotland is what? Uh, I got to say, I've laid off the beer. I've had a few whiskeys, um, and I've tried a few, and I and I, I got to try a few more because uh, there's a dead heat at the top. Yeah. You got a crowded That's leaderboard. That's the best thing to be saying. You got a yeah. crowded leaderboard there for your best whiskeys. I have actually. Yeah, it's a bit like I'm looking at the leaderboard right now. Like, so I, I, and I'll tell you, Johnny Walker Black doesn't even sort of get into the top ten right now. No, uh, that's what no. it's been like. No, uh, seriously, there's been some local ones that have actually been. It's terrible. You're making me sound like an alcoholic, but uh, no, you made it's yourself sound like an alcoholic. I didn't. No, no. You, yeah, and you've got to realize we're finishing at like 11:30 at night. It's cold. I actually walked back to where we're staying, a place called Hoppity House. Marvelous uh, people that are running this place, and they, and they leave a, just a few little bottles out there, and it's just like one. Well, maybe one in a bet just to sort of warm you up before you go to bed. That's so nice. I was talking about a bed and breakfast in Ireland where the innkeeper would go to bed and he'd say, you're on the honor system when you pour your Guinness. Yeah, well, well yeah, fortunately they're not doing that here. Otherwise, they'd be losing money. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, have fun today. Tell Brando and Rich we said hello. And uh should be an entertaining finish. Thank you, Frank. Thanks. Thanks, Dan. Hopefully it's history. Uh, Frank Nabolo, Golf Channel analyst. Uh, coverage today, 1.30 to 3.30 Eastern, as they have uh, two hours wrapping up the Open Championship.